What's up guys, it's Cam coming at you from the 2-6. Welcome back to Carolina Fragrance Reviews. Today I'm going over a fragrance that I meant to review a while back, but I'm kind of glad that I didn't do it right away because in the very beginning, I was not crazy about the fragrance at all. And now I like it a little bit more and I think it's perfect for summer, but it really deviates from the OG. If you've seen the thumbnail, you know what I'm talking about. So let's get into this. Okay, so if you haven't figured it out by now, I am talking about the latest release from the One Million line of Paco Rabanne, and it is the One Million Parfum. Now this is a 2020 release that has had a lot of mixed reviews. Some people love it, some people hate it, and then there's people like me that are kind of, mm, okay, I like it, but I'm not crazy about it. Especially when you think about a couple of the releases that came out after 1 million. Of course, they had like, I think it was solid gold. I might be wrong about that, but I know it was like a complete, you know, the back looks like this on the OG. It was solid gold and it was nauseatingly strong. And then they had the cologne, which was a lighter version, but still smelled very much like the original DNA. And then they came out with the Privé, which was a very solid release. They ramped this up with some tobacco, some myrrh, and some tonka bean, which is really nice. And me personally, I felt like this was a unique enough deviation from the original that they could have just called it something else. And then they followed up with Lucky, which has plum and hazelnut and just delicious. But again, they could have made this another fragrance oh and don't forget about that plum note plum note is to die for so if you haven't smelled this i would recommend getting your nose on it but now let's get to the matter at hand which is the parfum yet another release <laughs> from the one million line that really could have just been its own fragrance so if there's anything consistent about this line is that it's inconsistent from the OG. Of course, you know, like I said, you know, those first three releases were all working around that original DNA, but they've all deviated. Now, of course, where when they came out with Privé, I feel that you know, this is more centric towards like fall and winter. And then they added a season for this one, which would be good for spring as well, because it is a little bit lighter than the Privé and the original. And like I said, it went in another direction. Now for Privé, um, as you guys may have seen, it does have like the, the sun around it, which does, I guess, implicate like the solar notes of the fragrance. And they describe this as like solar or sun drenched leather, which, is misleading. That is what Paco Rabanne said as far as like describing this fragrance when it first came out. So I didn't know how to make heads or tails because everybody said, oh, they have a 1 million for summer. And yes, they do. So of course they did change up the front of this the same way that they did this one and this one. Except this one has a little, like I said, a little sundial or whatever. And I don't know exactly what they thought about when they did this because it goes very light and it's like a daytime scent it's sweet it's salty and it's floral it opens up very sweet and then you really start getting a lot of like tropical florals is what it seems like to me and i've even heard some people say you know you kind of get like a suntan lotion vibe there is a little bit of that going on and then for me, you know, I do like some of the white tropical flowers like Tahitian tear flower, different flowers like that, but you definitely get those white florals in here. As it dries down, another note that they utilize in this is a very popular note that they're using in a lot of modern fragrances, which is cashmere wood or cashmere, uh, which gives it kind of like that fuzziness that is in a lot of these modern fragrances. So they added that, they added the solar notes, which does definitely give it a much different vibe. This one is the lightest of the lot to say the least. Now, I didn't like it at all when I first bought it and I just did a blind buy on it, but it has grown on me. I have got a few compliments from it, 
And again, um, you're gonna hear a lot of different reactions from this. Uh, I think uh, Georgia Fragrance Apprentice is like a big fan of this and uh, saw where Ashton, I think Ashton didn't like it if I remember correctly. But you know, like I said, a lot of people are just kind of mixed up and I think it's because this fragrance just doesn't really fit this line. It's not a bad fragrance at all. As a matter of fact, you know, you can try any of these fragrances at today's sponsor. Go to www.myfragrancesamples.com. That's where I always go when I sample, except for this time. I didn't sample this. I saw it on sale and I figured I needed to do a review. And then I had my gear break down and all that good stuff. So yeah, so there we are with that. And then I was putting out other content. I was like, ah, forgot to do my review on this. But I wasn't super excited about the fragrance, but it is growing on me. And it does work really well in the higher heat. Like I said, I have got some compliments. To me, it reminds me of something that you would wear, you know, just hanging out you know, by the grill, you know, cooking out, hanging out with your buddies. Um, some people have said that this is a little bit feminine or maybe unisex in those florals in here might make this not exactly like the most masculine release this is a men's fragrance but yeah i'd say it is suitable for man or woman and i know some women who go full on with men's fragrances and they smell amazing on them so this is one that does lean a little bit feminine but like i say sample before you buy you know just see if you like it i think it's a decent fragrance but 2020 as you guys know has been an awful year in a lot of different ways and fragrance releases is going to fall under the category of 2020 being a crap year. Now one big upside to this fragrance is the performance. This thing really, really performs. As a matter of fact, it almost overperforms if that's possible. I know some of you like Beast Mode fragrances. I do as well, but because I'm not like, yay, what a killer release. You know, I wasn't super excited. You know, after it lasts 10 hours, you're probably ready for it to come off. Um, and then, you know, might shove it for a little bit. I don't know, you might absolutely love it and be happy as all get out that it lasts 10 hours. You're gonna get two hours of very strong, maybe two and a half hours of strong projection. I actually decided to wear this at work and it is such a sweat box where I work at. And I came in and my brother's like, dude, what the heck are you wearing? And I told him, he's like, you got that? And I was like, yes. I was like, got it for him, let him spray it on. Now, he liked how it smelled on me, but I don't think he was like ham about how it smelled on him. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know what to think about this little guy right here. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. But I suggest for you to sample it. Now the one thing that I really did not get about this fragrance until I really dug in and had it not said it, like as I was mentioning before, sun-drenched leather. The leather would not even be noticeable whatsoever because that's what threw me off. People are talking about a summertime leather fragrance. Mimo or Mimo actually pulled that off with their latest release, but Paco Rabanne didn't really throw the leather in on this. So if you're worried about leather fragrances, I know that's kind of like a, a difficult note for some people, don't fret. It's a sweet, salty, summertime floral scent <laughs> in a one million bottle. So let me know down in the comments, have you tried one million parfum? Let me know if you liked it or let me know if you plan on trying it. Until next time, I'll see you on Carolina Fragrance Reviews.